Today we're going to talk about numeric transformations in Power Query. We're going to start off looking at rounding, then we're going to look at arithmetic operations, we're going to look at grouping and aggregation, and finally we're going to look at some conditional columns. So let's go. We're going to look at this data set today. This is an e-commerce data set from Kaggle. Has too many rows um, for Excel, so we've got 2.6 million rows in there. So a perfect data set to try out some Power Query on. So in Excel, you go to data, you go to get data, you go to from file, and we're working with a CSV today, so from text CSV. I found my file here, which I've downloaded from Kaggle, and then this will load into the preview window. I can not load this to Excel because it's too big, so I'm gonna transform my data to bring it into Power Query. So you might have noticed that there's a couple of steps already done in here. There's the source step. You can click on the dial here to change any of the steps as they go on, but the source step just defines where the file's coming from, so I can change that at any time. Then Power Query promotes the headers, so you can see they're not promoted in this step here. Uh, and then they're promoted in the next step. So that's fine, happy with that. And then Power Query has changed the types. If you're interested, you can go up and see what code has been implemented in each step up here. This is the columns Power Query has changed the types to. But for this example, I'm just gonna select all the columns I don't want anymore because I need to remove them. And then I'm gonna go to remove columns and that leaves me with only the columns I want. Next step is I just wanna get rid of blanks out of here and no point in having blanks in this example. So I'm just gonna filter the blanks out and press okay. And then this category code, I want to split this into its different categories. So I'm gonna do this by a delimiter at a full stop. And then this is splitting this out into the three different parts of the category code. Again, I'm gonna go in and get rid of the nulls. Because I'm doing numerics in this video, I'm doing this very fast. Uh, but I'm just gonna rename the columns here and then we can just start working on some of the numeric functions. But I will be doing a text video where I'm gonna be going through all the splits and all that stuff in a lot more detail. So I'm just changing these three columns to cat one, cat two, cat three. I just wanna talk about the difference between the transform and the add column section in Power Query. So that's transform there and this is add column and they both have the numeric from numbers transformations. So in the add column, information, I can just do a transformation to see what sign something has, it will come up zero and one. And then there's another inbuilt transformation in information, which is odd or even, so is odd, and that'll come up with a Boolean column there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I want to do some arithmetic. So just wanna show you the difference between the transform and the add column here. So if I go to transform and add, this is gonna add to the number in place. So I'm just gonna add two here, and this has changed my price plus two. I'm gonna just remove this here. If I do the same thing in add column, this will create a new column with two added to my number. So this creates a new column here. I'm gonna multiply the price by 0.9, and this is gonna stand in for my cost. As you can see, there's three digits here. So what I can do now is use the rounding functionality in the transform, so that's gonna round it in place and I'm just gonna round this to two decimal places. There's round up and round down options, but the round is probably the best one. I'm gonna round that to two decimal places, and then what I wanna do is I wanna select my price, select my cost, go to add columns, and select subtract. So it matters what order you select them in. I select, selected my price, my cost, and then I was able to subtract. In the aggregations, this is quite weird, right? So you've got all these aggregations in here. I'm just gonna pick maximum in here, and this just creates a maximum number and now that's the whole query so that doesn't really work for me but there is a trick you can do here so i'm just going to get rid of that and i'm going to duplicate this um, whole query here and i can change the second one into just the maximum here so i'm going to rename the second query max and this is another query stands on its own i'm going to change this to maximum and now this is my maximum number. What I can do in the original query is I can reference that maximum calculation. So I can go into add column, custom columns, and I can create a conditional column here. I can call it profit and then minus max, and that's referencing the other query there. So minus the maximum, and then I'm gonna rename that profit minus max. I'm gonna select okay. And that's actually brought in the aggregation as a calculation into my data set. So quite useful there. 
But what we would actually do in this instance, if we wanted to group by data, we wanted to have aggregations, is we would use the group by functionality. I'm just going to clean out these last few steps here. And I'm going to go to group by. And what I can do in advanced group by's is I can select a couple of columns to group by. So I'm going to add three groupings. I'm going to add cat one, cat two, and cat three. This is going to form the basis for my output at the end of this. So cat one, cat two, cat three. I'm adding three aggregations here, just a sum of sales cost and profit. And this will transform my query the way I want it now. So this transforms my query into just the three categories, the sales cost and profit. And I can sort by just going into the column and sorting descending here. So this is sorted descending. I want to add another grouping in here because I think it'd be a good idea to have the number of transactions. So I can just again press the dial and I can add another aggregation and this aggregation is just going to be count rows. So I just need to name this uh, and I can just call this number of sales. I can press OK in here and this will give me a number of sales for each aggregation. So I'm good to go now back into Excel. All my steps are done so I can just choose close and load. You can choose close and load too if you want to get a bit more specific but I just want to close and load. And what this will do is this will bring in both queries. So I've got my max in there if I need to do that to do some something else in my Excel spreadsheet. I have my main query in there as well. So you see these take a long time to load. So I've just sped up the video a bit. Max is loaded and now the main query has loaded in here. So I've taken that very large data set down to 81 rows. I've got my aggregations. I can just do my formatting in here. Next time we're going to be looking at text transformations, which are probably the most used transformations within Power Query. I'll put a link up to that when it's ready. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel for more Power Query videos and like to stay up to date with analytics with Ad.